Hi there, welcome to lecture 14 of Fox. We're going to talk about advanced counting techniques. So, you know, last time we talked about counting, counting complex objects. The basic idea is think of a complex object as being built up by a sequence of instructions. And if you can, and if you can count the number of ways to put, put, to put together that sequence of instructions, you can count the number of complex objects. Okay, we talked about uh, a certain rule, the sum and product rule, very powerful rules for for, for counting and everything we did ultimately boils down to the sum and product rule. We talked about build-up counting where you build up to a complex problem by solving simple counting problems. We talked about bijection counting or one-to-one -one correspondence, you know, where you, you can count uh, one set by counting another set if you can establish a correspondence between those two sets. Okay, we ended with you know, infamous permutations and combinations and you know, that's related to the number of n-bit sequences with k ones. So n choose k, we introduce this, 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 this quantity, n choose k. It's the number of n-bit sequences with k ones. It's also the number of ways to choose a subset of size k from a set of n, n objects. Okay. And if you still had energy after that and, and you know, were able to absorb the binomial theorem, we gave a very nice, cute counting proof of the binomial theorem. Okay, now, today we're going to go a little further. We're going to, you know, we're going to discuss sequences and anagrams. So, you know, counting sequences can get a little complicated when you allow repetition. Um, we'll extend the sum rule to, to this principle of inclusion and exclusion, and with that you have a very powerful counting technique. Okay? The, the sum rule only holds when you're counting you know, the union of sets that are disjoint, and we can extend it, inclusion-exclusion holds when the sets can overlap. And lastly, this very interesting principle, very simple but very powerful you know, principle called the pigeonhole principle. Pay attention here because we will ultimately use the pigeonhole principle to show that you know some models of computing, some types of computers, are not that powerful by but by using the pigeonhole principle to identify deficiencies in those you know models of computing those computers. Okay. And we'll see some applications of the pigeonhole principle in particular. If you go back to the hundred dollar challenge problem, you know back then when I when I showed you the problem, the first thing that should have struck you is well, well maybe you know this guy's offering a hundred bucks, maybe the the problem cannot be solved. So today, I'm going to show you a very beautiful proof technique. I'm going to prove to you that that problem, the $100 subset sum, sum problem, I'm going to prove to you that that problem can be solved. Okay. But the way I'm going to prove it to you is, is going to be quite you know, stunning in the sense that I'm going to prove to you that it can be solved without giving you any idea whatsoever what the solution is. So, so hopefully that will give you renewed motivation to try and solve the problem. Because now you know it's solvable. I'm not sending you on a wild goose chase. Okay, uh, let's get started and let's move to the board. Okay, so we have a lot to take in from last lecture on counting various, you know, you know counting tools. So let's relax today and do some more advanced stuff. Okay, now we're going to talk about anagrams, okay, or sequences with repetition. We're going to talk about overlapping sets or inclusion exclusion. And lastly, we're going to talk about this very important principle. It's a simple principle called the pigeonhole. It's going to be very important for us when we talk about the theory of computing, but it's important on its own, okay? especially for counting. Okay, um, so let's begin. You have, you know, a sequence of letters, mark, M-A-R-K. Okay, so question, how many words can we get by arranging these letters in, in, in various different ways, okay? So by reordering these letters, by, by, by choosing an arrangement of these letters, well, you can think I'm interested in the words, so W1, W2, W3, W4, and this is like, you know, I have four students whose first initials are M, A, R, and K, okay? And I, I run a race, and how many orders are there for this race to finish, okay? And so we, we know how to do this. There are four ways to pick the first letter, then three ways to pick the second, then two, then one, and the product rule says multiply. So this is four factorial equals 24. So mark number of different permutations of the letters is 24. Okay, let's introduce a complication. And this complication arises if we have some repeated letters. Okay, so let's talk about Anna. Okay, again, I'm interested in rearranging these letters. And, you know, you know, for example, two of the rearrangements of mark are... Uh, M A R K, and you know if, if I if I if I flip the two of the two of the words that I can make are mark, and if I flip, I get K A R M carb. Okay, and these are different words. Okay, and th and, and and these two contribute to this twenty four, this four factorial. Okay, now if I do the same thing with Anna, okay, then you know um, you know I get A N N A. So that's just like mark. And now I flip 
the equivalent of the M and the K, which, is, which happen to be the two A's, and I get A, N, and A, and that's the same word. Okay, and this is the complication with counting the number of ways to rearrange, to, to, to sort of combine the letters of Anna to get words. Okay, mark is easy, it's four factorial. Anna, if you, if you try to combine, it's going to be much less than four factorial, and, you know, I leave it as an exercise for you to figure out how many different words can you get. I'll give you a couple of seconds if you pause the video. Now, if you're coming back, you know, you, uh, I leave it to you to verify that there are only uh, six, far fewer. Okay, turns out it's 24 divided by 2 divided by 2. If I were to be more, you know, sort of accurate, it's 24 divided by 2 factorial divided by uh, 2 factorial. Okay, and so uh, markedly less, much less, and that has to do with the repetition. So we see that, you know, when sequences have repetitions, Okay, counting the number of ways to rearrange and get distinct, you know, sequences, or in, in, in the case of words, distinct anagrams, is a little complicated. So let's, you know, try to solve this problem systematically, okay, and um, we'll, let's move up a notch in complexity and consider aardvark. A-A-R-D-V-A-R-K, okay, and we are interested in the number of ways to, to arrange the letters of aardvark to get different words, okay, and just like Anna, there's repetition, okay, so it's complicated. Okay, so um, let's sort of break this problem step by step, okay, and the first thing I'm going to observe is basically what we're interested in is sequence of letters, okay, so a sequence of eight letters where, you know, if I count up the number of A's, there are, there are A's, there are R's, uh, there are, so there's A's, three, there are R's, two, there's D, there's V, and there's K, okay, so one, 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 so what, how, how many sequences of, basically what I'm asking is how many sequences of eight letters are there, okay, where I'm required to place three A's, two R's, one D, one V, and one K. That's effectively the question that we are asking. Okay. So, you know, if I were to generalize this question, I could think of the A as a type of object, the R as a type of object, the D, V, and K as types of objects. They happen to be different letters. Okay. And I'm asking for a sequence of, of length 8, okay, in which there are 3 of type 1, 2 of type 2, 1, 1, 1 of types 3, 4, and 5. So I have different types of objects, okay, and I'm interested in a sequence in which I'm required to place a certain number of each type of objects. So if I were to further generalize, I could introduce the concept of an n sequence. So the length of the sequence is n, in this case 8. Okay, and I have different types of objects. In this case, there are five objects. So imagine I have R types of objects, and I want K1, so in this case, three of type one, okay, three A's, K1 of type one, okay, two of type two, two R's, K2 of type two, and so on, K sub R of type R. Okay, so the most general version of this problem is to say I, I'm interested in a sequence of length n, okay, and I have r types of objects, and you're required to place k1 of type 1 in my sequence, k2 of type 2 up to kr of type r. Okay, since it's an n sequence and this is the number of each type, it had better be the case that k1 plus k2 plus, plus kr must equal n. So sometimes we will call this a k1, k2, k3, dot, 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 uh, K sub R sequence. Okay. And the number of ways of doing that, the number of ways of doing that, we will write as N, K1, K2, K3, KR. Okay. And so here we are interested in eight, we are interested in eight. 3, 2, 1, 1, 1. So we have a sequence of length 8, okay, with three objects of type 1, two objects of type 2, one object of type 3, one of type 4, one of type 5. Okay, so this is just so, so, sort of introducing a general notation, okay, and I just want to illustrate with anagrams that constructing anagrams is a, is a special case of this general type of problem. So let's go ahead and solve this problem in a systematic way. And the, the way we solve the problem, it'll become obvious what the solution is 
what, what the answer is to the general problem, how many, how many ways are there you know, to, to, to construct a sequence of n objects with certain specified numbers of each type. Okay, and then we'll summarize okay. and do some applications. So, effectively I'm looking for a sequence of length 8 with some letters. Okay. So, you know, let's create you know, some boxes where I'm going to put the letters in a sequence of length 8. So, here's my sequence of length 8. Okay, and I'm going to create 8 boxes. Okay, in which I'm going to place the letters and I have to place this distribution of letters and then I will have uh, a rearrangement of the or, 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 or an arrangement of the letters in Artvark to form some other weird word perhaps and I'm interested in how many ways can I do that. So since I have to place all of these letters, okay, I might as well start with the A's. Okay, so step one, start with A's and more generally start with type one. Okay, so start with the A's and it, okay, now, you know, what about the A's will make, you know, a word different. So, effectively, I need to place the A's in three of these slots. And if I place them in three slots, in three, in three slots, or if I, and if I change the three slots, I've changed the word. Okay. But, with respect to the A's, the only thing that matters is which slots do the A's go into. For example, like, I might pick this slot, uh, this slot and uh, this lot, okay, and put A's here, A, 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 okay. So, in my first step, where I start with the A's, I, ha I have to choose three of the boxes out of the total of eight boxes in which to place the A's, okay. So, there are eight choose three ways of doing that, because I'm, I'm choosing a subset of size three from eight. Okay, and we solved that problem last time when we talked about combinations and permutations. Okay, so the, the number of ways to place, so place three A's, okay, i.e. choose three boxes from eight. And the number of ways to do this is eight choose three. Okay, that, you know, we talked about last time. The number of ways to choose K boxes number of ways to choose k objects out of a set of n, the number of k subsets from a set of size n. In this case, k is 3, n is 8. Okay, now I'm thinking of, you know, the product rule which we talked about last time where, you know, if I said that, you know, so if there are n1 ways of doing x1 and after you have done x1, if there are n2 ways of doing x2, and so on and so forth, then the total number of ways of doing whatever you're trying to do, for example, construct, construct this sequence of steps x1, x2 up to x, you know, k, is the product of the number of ways. But providing that after you do x1, you fix what you did for x1 and consider the number of ways to do x2 after you have fixed x1. Okay, so what's my next step here? My next step here is place two r's. Okay, but after I have placed the A's. Now, okay, how do I place the two R's after I place the A's? Well, the A's occupy three of these boxes. Okay, so in order to place the R's, I have to choose two of the remaining boxes that are left vacant after I place, place the A's. So I have to choose two of the boxes from the remaining five. Choose two boxes from five. And so how many ways can I do that? I can do that in five choose two ways. That's what we solved last time. Okay, now I can go more quickly. Three. So now let's say I place the R's, you know, I'll place the R's, I don't know, here and here. Okay, so I, I, I chose those two boxes out of the remaining five. Well, how many boxes remain? Three. So place uh, uh, one D. So choose one box from Three. So how many ways can I do that? Three, choose one. Okay. And then, so suppose I place the D here. Uh, D. Okay. And then four, place one V. So choose one box from how many? From two. From two, i.e. there are two choose one ways of doing this. Okay, so where will I place the, the, the V? Maybe here. I don't know. Okay, and, you know, 
Step five, place um, 1K. So choose one box from how many boxes remain? One. Okay, and that's not really a choice. It's not much of a choice, but nevertheless, you know, we can do it in one choose one ways. Okay, and at the end of the day, I've placed my K here and I've constructed the word Vadraka, whatever. Okay. All right. So, what have I accomplished? In, I have systematically, in five steps, okay, constructed an, uh, an arrangement of the words. Okay. And my first step had this many ways, my second step had this many ways. After doing the first step, my third step had this many ways after doing the first two, okay, and my and, and my fourth had this many ways after doing the first three, and my fifth had this many ways after doing the first four. Okay, so the product rule says, product rule says number of ways is the product eight three times five two times three one times 2, 1, times 1, 1. Okay. Wow, very complicated. Yes, very complicated. Okay, so there's the answer. Okay, that's the number of ways of choosing the A's, then the V's, then the, then the, then the R's, then the D's, then the V's, then the K's. And so that's the number of anagrams for these letters. Okay, and so we've solved the problem of counting sequences with repetition. But let's simplify. Okay. Observe that this is 8 factorial over 3 factorial times 5 factorial. So we gave the formula before. So let me write that important formula again. Uh, so n choose k is n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. Okay. So this is h choose 3 times 5 choose 2. So that's 5 factorial over 2 factorial, 3 factorial. And then 3 choose 1 is 3 factorial divided by 1 factorial, 2 factorial. So 3, 1 factorial, 3 minus 1 factorial. Times 2 factorial over 1 factorial, 1 factorial. Times 1 factorial over 1 factorial, 0 factorial. And you need to know that 0 factorial is 1. Okay, and that looks even more complicated. I said I'm going to simplify, but yes, because, you know, look. There's a lot of cancellation that takes place. So this 5 factorial cancels with that 5 factorial. This 3 factorial cancels with this 3 factorial. And you see this continues. Okay? This uh, 2 factorial cancels with this 2 factorial. Okay? And this 1 factorial cancels with this 1 factorial. Okay, 1, 1. You know, the 1 is it's, it's kind of trivial to cancel out 1s. Okay, so what do we... And 0 factorial is always 1, so we can ignore that. Okay. So what do we end up with? We end up with 8 factorial divided by 3 factorial, 2 factorial, 1 factorial, 1 factorial, 1 factorial. Ah, much simpler. Okay. And now let's do some pattern recognition. What, and effectively what we have proved, and now you can see the formal proofs in the text and the, we, of this important formula, we even give two different proofs, one based on, you know, sort of a, 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 a bijection approach using multiplicity and the other, which is just this approach, but generalized to the general case. Okay. But what you will observe is that eight, where did we see eight before? Hmm, eight. It's the number of letters total. It's the length of the sequence. So eight is N. Where did we see three? Three, two, two. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And if you do this for the general case, you will get exactly the same formula, but instead it will be, in the general case, it will be n factorial, so n factorial, 8 factorial, divided by k1 factorial, k2 factorial, all the way to k sub r factorial. Okay. And there's another way to see this, is that you can take all the you can take all the eight, the eight factorial ways of arranging the words, treating them as all, uh, all the letters, treating them as all distinct. But now, once you have arranged the A's, 
Okay, there are three factorial ways of permuting the a's, which give you the same word. So we have to divide out that three factorial. And there are two factorial ways of permuting the r's, which give you the same word. So you have to divide out that two factorial. Now that's related to multiplicity, multiplicity based, you know, uh, correspondences and counting using those. And you can read about that a little in the previous chapter. Okay, but basically we've proved this formula. It's a very powerful formula. Okay. So let me show you a couple of applications. Well, let's first do an example. Example. Ah, if we wanted to solve the problem for aardvark, well, you just need to compute that number. Okay. Uh, example. So, you know, you're going to have a parade and you have a road, okay, and you have black flags, you know, three of them, and blue flags, three of them, and red flags, three of them. This is the way I draw flags. Okay. And then the question becomes, well, you know, I'd like to figure out, you know, how many ways are there, how many distinct ways are there for me to sort of arrange these flags in a row on the street. Okay. And so that, you know, you know, every time I have the parade, I'll have a different arrangement of the flags. Okay. Well, I have a sequence of nine objects. So N equals nine. Okay. And three of type one. What is type one? Black. Three, so of type one, so K1 equals three. Three of type two, so three of type two, so K2 equals three. Three of type three, so K3 equals three. So the number of rearrangements, so the number of sequences where I have this kind of repetition, okay, is just the total number of objects, nine factorial over three factorial, three factorial, three factorial. Done. Okay. Um, binary sequences. Sequences. Okay. So a binary sequence of length n, length n with k ones. We, we we saw before that this was n choose k. Okay. But now I'm going to think about it this way. I have n objects. So n objects. K uh, one, you can think of this as type one. Okay, and, and and there's a second kind of object. So we have only two objects if it's a binary sequence. And how many are type two? N minus K are type two. These are, 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 are zeros, are zero, which is type two. So Using this formula, the number of distinct sequences where I have two types of objects, k of type 1 and n minus k of type 2, is n factorial divided by k factorial, okay, divided by each of these factorial, n minus k factorial. And lo and behold, ta-da, same formula. Good thing that, you know, things derived in different ways agree, okay? And so, in effect, you know, n choose k, n k is, is a shorthand notation for n k1, uh, sorry, n k, n minus k. So in this notation, you know, we would write n k as n type 1 k type 2 n minus k. So you have k1 and k2. But we just shorten that to n k. Because if you know n and k, you know n minus k. Okay, one final application. Okay, let's consider the trinomial. The trinomial. Trinomial. Okay, so x plus y plus z to the power n. Okay, so, you know, if you expand this, it's x plus y plus z, x plus y plus z, dot, 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 x plus y plus z. Okay. A bunch of x plus y plus z, there are n of them. So you, you, you'll, you'll generate an n sequence. You'll, you'll generate n sequences, sequences with x's, y's, and z's. Okay, and so, um, um, you know, we may ask uh, how many such sequences will you generate? Okay, you'll generate three to the n, three times three times three times three, depending on which one you pick from here and here and here and so on. Okay, so three to the n such sequences. And, you know, when you collect up terms, uh, some of them will have i x's, some of them will have j y's, and some of them will have n minus i minus j z's. So, so the powers of x, y, and z that will appear are of the form x to the i, y to the j, and then z 
to the n minus i minus j. Okay, so this is a typical monomial that will appear in this expansion. And we might ask, if I tell you i, j, and n minus i minus j, okay, so let's call this k. If I tell you i, j, and k, so if I tell you, and it, it must be the case that i plus j plus k is equal to n. Okay. If I tell you i, j, and k, I can ask, what's the coefficient of that monomial? Well, it's the number of sequences with i x's, j y's, and z k's. That's just n factorial divided by i factorial, j factorial, k factorial. Okay. n factorial divided by the product of these three factorials. That's this formula. And so this guy is the sum over all i plus j plus k equals to n of terms of this form. And the coefficient of x to the i, y to the j, z to the k is, you know, n factorial divided by i factorial, j factorial, k factorial. This, okay, that this equates to sums of terms of this form is an example of what's called a multinomial theorem. And the special case of that is the binomial theorem, which we discussed last time. Okay, let me give you a cheat sheet. Much as I hate cheat sheets, it's, it's worth having this cheat sheet. Okay. 